All right. Up till now, we have assumed that fixed overheads will remain the same. So if you guys see in all our videos up till now, we have assumed that fixed overheads are constant and they are irrelevant. That may be the case under marginal costing, but if you guys recap under absorption costing, we ensure that fixed overheads are absorbed on per unit basis. So the fixed overhead is also added to the total cost per unit. Which means that if there is a change in output, there can be a change in fixed cost as well. If your fixed overheads are absorbed on per unit basis, and there could also be a situation where your fixed overheads could change due to the difference between budgeted expenditure and actual expenditure. You could expect your electricity bill to be higher than you, you forecasted earlier. You could expect the rent to go up salaries, anything else could change. Right, so we will now take a look at fixed overhead variances. There can also be a variance for fixed overheads. So we can divide our fixed overhead variances as follows. We can have a fixed overhead expenditure variance. There could be a difference due to expenditure. The cost of any bill, electricity, salaries could go up or could be lower. Or there can also be a fixed overhead volume effect. Due to change in output, there could be an effect on your fixed overhead. Your fixed overhead volume variance can be further decomposed into fixed overhead capacity and fixed overhead efficiency. All right, so we'll further break this down into two other variances. So in total, we can have the fixed overhead expenditure variance. Then we will have our fixed overhead volume variance, which can be further broken down as capacity and efficiency. We'll take a look at each variance over here. Now let's start with expenditure. So if you have to calculate your fixed overhead expenditure variance, which is quite straightforward, all we'll do is we'll compare our actual fixed overhead versus our budgeted fixed overhead. Over here, we'll compare the two overheads we expected versus what actually ended up. The difference will determine our variance. If obviously your overhead was lower than what you budgeted, that should be favorable to the firm, that's beneficial. But if your actual fixed overhead is greater than your budgeted fixed overhead, that should be adverse to the firm, right? So fixed overhead expenditure is quite straightforward. What about volume? Okay, so in order to calculate the volume variance, we first need to understand and recall the concept of overhead absorption rate. Remember, we learned that how firms absorb fixed overheads on per unit basis, and in order to do that, they use overhead absorption rate. Overhead absorption rate was simply budgeted overhead upon budgeted activity that helps us trace overheads on per unit basis. So for capacity, now what do I mean by capacity? Capacity means that if the firm produces more units than it budgeted, it will be able to recover more overheads. Why is that? Because for every unit that the firm produces and sell, it is charging a fixed overhead per unit over there. So the logic for fixed overhead capacity variance becomes quite simple. We have to compare the actual hours of production minus the budgeted hours of production into the standard OAR. Actual hours means that the activity on which we're tracing our overheads, how many hours were actually used versus how many were budgeted. The more hours that were consumed will obviously help us recover more overheads and we'll multiply that by the standard overhead absorption rate, which is the rate in dollars per hour. For efficiency, we'll compare the flexed hours. Remember, we've learned what flexed is, which is simply the actual output into the standard R per unit. This R could be for labor, could be for machine, whatever is being used to trace your overheads on per unit basis. So we'll compare our flexed hours with actual hours, and we'll multiply that by the standard OAR. So because this is efficiency by using more hours than the firm should have, that should become adverse to the firm. But if the firm did the job in fewer hours, it should be favorable. We'll obviously apply this now to a very simple example. So let me show you the example first. Yeah, so over here, you guys can see the firm has given you the budgeted data. Let's focus on that. So the budgeted fixed overheads were 50,000. The labor hours to be used were 10,000 and the output was 10,000 units as well. That's your budgeted data. But in reality, the fixed overheads ended up being 54,000, 11,000 labor hours were used and the output produced was 10,300 units. So the firm produced more units over here, right? Now labor hours is obviously the rate on which you will trace your overheads. 
But before that, what we can figure out is the expenditure variance because that's quite straightforward. $50,000 was your budgeted fixed overhead, but the actual fixed cost came out to be 54,000. So that simply becomes 54,000 versus 50,000. Since the cost of overheads went up, that should be an adverse variance, right? So we've calculated the fixed overhead expenditure variance. This part was easy. But now what about the volume variance? For that, we have to figure out the overhead absorption rate. We have to figure out the standard hours, actual hours, flexed hours. Let's get into those calculations. So what we can first calculate is the standard overhead absorption rate. Remember, overhead absorption rate is always calculated for the budgeted data. So I can say my budgeted fixed overheads are 50,000 and my budgeted labor hours are 10,000 hours over here. That gives you the standard overhead absorption rate to be $5 per hour. Hope you guys recall the concept of overhead absorption rate. That's the rate to trace overheads on a per unit basis. Okay, now for every unit that we expected to make, we expected to make 10,000 units and our budgeted labor hours are also 10,000, which means that the budgeted labor hour per unit becomes one hour over here. All right, so the firm expected that on every unit that it makes, it will consume one labor hour. Okay, now we have our budgeted labor hours. We have our actual labor hours. What's missing is your flex labor hours. How do we calculate the flex labor hour? So your flex labor hour will be one hour per unit was the budgeted time and we actually produce 10,300 units. Remember the concept of flex, it's actual units into the standard price, standard hour, whatever we're using over here. So your flex labor hours will be 10,300 hours, right? So just to summarize this up, the budgeted labor hours were 10,000, but since we made 10,300 units, we should have used 10,300 hours, but the actual hours used were 11,000. All right, so it's very important when you see this data, you guys try to figure out all these numbers, your standard OAR, the labor hour or machine hour per unit, and the flex hour. Now, once we have this, we can calculate the fixed overhead volume variances. So yes, now plugging this in, for fixed overhead capacity, actual hours is 11,000, budgeted labor hours was 10,000. What you guys can understand is that since we're using more hours, and at a standard rate of $5 per hour, this becomes $5,000 favorable. Now you, you guys would be again wondering why is this favorable? Since the firm uses more labor hours, it means that it is recovering more for fixed overheads from the customer because under absorption costing for every unit that you make, you are also charging for the fixed overhead. So higher capacity because of producing extra units will help you recover more fixed costs. So that's $5,000 favorable. But now what does efficiency explain? Efficiency explains that did you actually recover this entire 5,000? And what efficiency explains is that the flexed overheads were 10,300. So this job should have been completed in 10,300 hours, but you actually ended up using 11,000 hours. So since we used more hours, but we did not convert them into units, so at $5 per hour, we lost or it was adverse 3,500 over here, right? So in simple words, the firm expected to make 10,000 units, but it ended up making 10,300 units. Now for 10,300 units, the firm used 11,000 hours. It should have done this job in 10,300 hours. So those 700 hours you guys can think of according to our budget, were wasted. They should have been converted into units and the firm should have recovered overheads for that. So 5,000 is that if all 11,000 hours ended up making 11,000 units, so it should have been 5,000 favorable, but efficiency compares that did you use those hours to convert into units? So again, 700 hours were wasted or you can say were taken up additionally. So at $5 per hour, this becomes 3,500 adverse. So finally, to summarize the fixed overhead volume variance, you guys can see that our standard OAR was $5 per hour and our budgeted information was that one unit would require one hour. So it means that on every unit that the firm would make, it was expecting that it would charge the customers $5 per unit. 
since one unit requires one hour and for that hour you're charging them five dollars so our standard recovery was five dollars per unit so we can also calculate the fixed overhead volume variance directly by comparing the units into the standard recovery which can be done something like this so that's 10,300 units minus 10,000 we made 300 extra units that's the volume effect and on every unit we will recover five dollars per unit so that's 1500 favorable over here all right that's the same thing as totaling this up 5000 favorable for capacity 3500 adverse for efficiency so if you net that up you will end up with the same answer that's fixed over at volume variance 1500 favorable so if the question ever would ask you to calculate the fixed over at volume variance directly just compare the actual units minus the budgeted units and multiply that by the standard recovery per unit.